The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life, indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. John chapter 10, verse 10. FX presents the Indie Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indubians. This is the Indie Podcast. I'm T. Sterling Watson. Thank you for stopping by and pressing play. Now, how are we all doing today? Good? Fantastic. Now, let's just jump right into this because I have a whole bunch of things. I wanted to just get out there because I realized, like, um, well, first of all, I have the most difficult decision to make each time I do this podcast because I have two different microphones. Um, Why does that matter to any of you? I don't know. But for me, some of them have different audio qualities, some that I like more than others, and I'm like, hmm, can I use this one, but I'm not at a desk, so it's hard to actually use that one, So because it's like if you move it too much, then it jiggles and makes noise. I need a mic just like, you know, I had a studio mic, but I'm, like, I, I keep trying to tell people. I'm this this is a, an experimental podcast, so I'm trying different ways to record, even though these segments are usually recorded the same way, and uh, I'm just playing with different microphones. So the one I'm wearing now, or the one I'm wearing, the one I'm using now is a headset, And I know that if the little microphone piece is just a little too close to my mouth, then first of all, I am a bit louder, but then also uh, you hear some extra noises and I mean, this is interesting to no one. So we're just going to move on and go past that. This episode, um, I realized I had forgotten or not even forgotten. I just didn't even think about it uh, regarding the last episode. I could have just discussed like, Hey, my 30th birthday is coming up. And, um, you know, age 30, that what, what has happened in the past 30 years or not even that, but what, uh, Twitter made me realize is that it was the 30 year anniversary of the challenger space shuttle exploding. Um, that was actually January 28th. My birthday is January 29th. So, um, I decided that I would talk to my parents about, you know, what was going on through their minds. Where were they? What were they doing when all that happened? Um, but that'll come up in a little bit. What I also realized, and I, this is probably the longest I've gone without, um, thanking people for like wishing me a happy birthday via Facebook. It's something that is like a phenomenon that happens like, uh, I don't know, I want to say since, what, 2010, probably even before that, but since Facebook has become so prominent in our lives that it's something that those people who have their birthday published on Facebook or everybody knows, like, they sit and they wait, like, until midnight to see who is that first person to start wishing them a happy birthday. I, as many people have, I, I tell them many times, I'm not really on Facebook, and this can actually prove it because I... I don't think I've been on Facebook since January 27th or 28th. So it's been a whole, well, actually at this point, it's almost been maybe closer to three weeks since since I've been on Facebook. But I will be on Facebook soon, if not in a few minutes, just so I can, um, I'll be able to promote this particular episode. That's normally the only time I kind of interact with Facebook. Or if there's certain people um, like Michelle who will tell me, hey, go check out Facebook. I posted uh, a picture or I tweet or not tweeted. I tagged you on some random memory. Remember that time with um, that thing happening and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. And I'm calling her out because she's usually the one that calls me and says, hey, go look at your Facebook. I tagged you on something. So I'm like, all right. So I will go do that. So, and with with all that said, I'm saying it's been, I guess, uh, almost, what, two, three weeks now since I've been on Facebook? So all those people that wished me a happy birthday, I still have not read your greetings. And I thought about doing that now, but I'm like, hmm, who is really going to sit around and listen to me do that? So what I think I will do, 
I will do that later on in the show. Maybe that'll be like the last bit. That'll be like one of those uh, extra like credits kind of things, and then you would just have to you know wait till the end to you know hear your name so you can get through all of this stuff, which is good stuff. I've got a great show uh, planned, which I mean. I've actually had this idea of putting the show, this particular episode, together in my head for uh, since my birthday, really, and a lot of things were happening. Um, I was in the middle of uh, doing the Daniel Fast, which is the main topic of this particular episode, and um, yeah, my birthday happened. So, and and I say like, hey, my birthday happened, as if you know something grand and spectacular happened and not really it wasn't and just to let people know the way i celebrated i really didn't um i went to um we had a revival at my church it was a three-day three-night revival and the the revival ended on the friday which is what my birthday was so um we were there. I did get a lot of calls and text messages, so I, you know, I made sure I, I thanked all those people accordingly. Um, and I, my phone isn't even connected to Facebook right now, so I wasn't even getting those notifications. So I didn't even know. Uh, people on Twitter, they did get those notifications. Uh, Fringe Friday, which I host, well, on Fridays, um, I did have that canceled because I knew I wasn't going to be home to to host it. Um, but a lot of those regulars also wished me a happy birthday, so that was nice. Um, and speaking of French Friday, I would like to give a shout out to Glenn Whitman, which is one of the writers and um, I guess science consultants or story editor of a uh, fringe. He joined us for a live tweet, um, one of these recent Fridays. So that was pretty awesome uh, because he had written that episode, so he's able to give us more insight. And that was that was pretty awesome. So I'm pretty sure he'll be back for season four, or at least I hope he will be back. Um, or, you know, even before then, you can just drop by and just give us any little uh, insights and details to whatever the show is. And I would just love, absolutely love, if we can get other stars or even other writers or directors, whoever, to join us in that live tweet. And while I'm talking about it now, if you are listening and you are, have no idea what I'm talking about, on um, Netflix... Fringe, all five seasons are there, and on Twitter, we do these things called live tweets, where we all get together, and we just, you know, kind of synchronize ourselves, like, okay, we're all going to start hitting, uh, we're all going to hit play at uh, on episode 13, starting now, and then, you know, we start, and then we just tweet about what we're watching, and it's like you're watching in a group, it's it's nice, I like it, it's collaborative, kind of, it's fun, yes, and, uh, yeah, that's that's what I do, pretty much... Uh, I was going to say every Friday, but I did take a few Fridays off recently. Like I said, because of my birthday and the revival, I knew I was going to be home. Um, but most times I'm there. Just look up the hashtag Fringe Friday. And most of the time you'll find me and, you know, my my other fringies, I guess, is that's what we're calling ourselves. And um, you'll see some other people that really aren't involved in what we're doing. They just, you know, love the show Fringe. And then they just have this hashtag Fringe Friday. And they're just wishing everybody else a happy Fringe Friday. So that is that. But um, moving on back to my birthday, because it's all about me. Um, I did sit down with my parents. And uh, I asked them about um, just what was going on during that time um, between, like, January 28th and, and, well, the day I was actually born, and all of what they were feeling, what was, you know, what was that like? And, uh, I mean, we, it, the conversation itself lasted for, you know, a good while, a good, you know, five, ten minutes, so, which I will play for you now, um, and <laughs> more things kind of happened afterwards, which I wish, oh, man, maybe I should have recorded that, too, but I had already hit stop, but either way, I hope you enjoy, and you also get a, a get to experience once again um, how my parents interact with each other, and I think you may have experienced that before in episode two, I think that was the last time they were on the podcast, so... Anyway, here is uh, Mom and Dad Watson, or, or uh, Pastor Watson and first, or and, and Lady Watson, as they they are called at my church. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. You know, the, the space shuttle crashing or exploding when the day yeah. was born. It must be in another book down there. Yeah, there are two other ones down there, and which, like, I don't want to flip through too much because then I'll start getting distracted <laughs> looking through them. Oh. Well, you got to pick a time when you can. Like your mother yeah. drove herself to the hospital. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Oh. Um, well, it was actually, it happened on a day where it was my appointment to go oh. see. Okay. Um, Dr. 
What's his name? Who cares? You drove from Meriden. <laughs> you drove from Meriden to New Haven. Condon. What was his name? I know C O N. Constantine. No, it was like Constantine. You drove from Meriden to New Haven to have a baby. I was going for my appointment, and my water broke. No, it broke before. Where actually they say it was like they call it, it was a leak. I forgot the name for it, but it was a slow leak. So since the next day, when I went down there, um, that's when they decided, well, right, you might as well just come on in mm. and let's you know get you ready. So that's why I had to call you and get somebody to take Terrell. And I think we had a dog, Some another Mittery. dog at the time. Hmm? Somebody to take Mittery? Or... No, I, mean, I think Mittery's at school. I only had... No, I'm not talking to have you. Yeah, yeah it was Mittery. <laughs> yeah, so we had to get Mittery. And I think we had uh, the dog, the other dog, not um, Chief. And you stopped by Burger King on because I was on Route 80 to tell me you were going to the doctor. Did I? When I called you. No, you stopped there first. You called me back later and told you how to the baby. And then I had to find a replacement to come in and cover <laughs> for me. And right after you were born, they promoted me to a store manager. Oh, wow. And wow. I was trying to take a week off to be with mommy. And they only wanted to give me a couple of days because they wanted me to start right away as a store manager. Wow. wow. So I got promoted the same day you were born. I didn't know that. I could have wrote this in a book. <laughs> well, the other big event was the, the Challenger exploding, I guess, the day before. Yeah, the Space yeah. Shuttle Challenger mm -hmm. exploded. The, the 28th. Because there was a big... Uh, yeah, this was the event yeah. around the day. Right. So that was the only... Uh, yeah, the big thing where seven people died and one was a teacher. Mm -hmm. But um, that's it. I always have. Well, I I'm, had no no. I'm fine. I had no idea what, like obviously were like where you guys were. Like it was one of those events. Like you kind of know where you were when that happened. So I wasn't sure if you guys were already, already in the hospital. Just maybe you were in labor. I didn't know. I didn't know any of this. So. I actually saw. Um, is after I had you, I think. The next day, we had TV in the room, and they were, that's why I actually saw a lot of the coverage. Oh, okay. Then, and I said, "Oh wow, this is happening!" <laughs> you know, this happened of the day, around your day. Hmm. And I was always thought about, you know, how some people say, um, when somebody comes in the world, that somebody is leaving the world, and that always came to mind hmm. about you know those people. That died. It's not necessarily too because the world is still growing. <laughs> <laughs> it's growing, but there's still people dying. Yeah, it doesn't mean that because somebody died, somebody new. These are anything. just my thoughts, okay? You can believe what you want to believe. Otherwise, it would still be an equal balance. Well, how do you know it's an equal balance? Because I hear. The population this... keeps growing every 10 years. So it's not an equal balance. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <sighs> so, do you, what do you remember? Where, you, where were you when you found? I just told you where I was at. I was you, at Burger King. When the Challenger exploded, too? You were there? No, yeah. when the Challenger. Yeah, I was at Burger King when the Challenger exploded, I thought. I don't know. Do you remember when you heard about it? On the news, like everybody else. So, you, you could have been in the room with me yeah. at the hospital when you heard about it. You didn't hear about it at work. No. I probably was in the hospital with you. Yeah. yeah. Because we didn't have these cell phones and alerts and <laughs> CNN alerts and everything at that time. So <laughs> we didn't know. So it was there, I guess, with a newborn, you're too um, maybe excited or happy or just wrapped up in that versus being sad about what was happening. Yeah, I was wrapped up in you. Huh. Yeah. I was sad. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you sad? Because your name was supposed to be Jorel. <laughs> Oh, yes. And mommy stuck her fingernails in me. And said, right. <laughs> I don't really uh, know what happened she, then. She but. really won that battle. And then if uh, Mittery was here, she'd be saying that she was also sad because she wanted me to be a girl. No. Well, she told me. She, well, that's what yeah, she, she told might me. have wanted you to be yeah, a girl. Yeah, she wanted you to be a girl. We needed you to be a boy. Thank you very much. me. <laughs> I had enough girls. 
Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to be a boy. Mommy wanted to be different. She wanted to have a boy. And I didn't have, like, a lot of people always try to find out what they're having before they have mm -hmm. their child. I didn't do that. I wanted to be surprised what it was. I would, but I still kept hoping. <laughs> Be a boy. Of course, Cindy named you give you your middle name. Yes. I've, yeah. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? I don't know why. Why does she want a Sterling? So I I don't know if she's the one who told me or it just was a story that was passed, but she just wanted me to add some kind of class to my name or something. Something oh. classy. Oh, okay. But Durrell was real classy. <laughs> why Durrell? Was there because yeah, of Superman's father's name. Oh. And you don't hear anybody named Jarrell. Some, I think some celebrity has done that though. But they're a celebrity, so they run into kids weird things anyway. But, so yeah. I wanted him to have a unique name, not a traditional football player name. Well, I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> Maybe you should have explained more that you wanted a I unique. Did. Put your fingernails to talk about. <laughs> would, I, would I have had the hyphen in there too? Since it's like Jor L, the way that it's written out. Or would you have a unique spelling for that too? You know I don't spell well. Right, so it, it wouldn't have been spelled that way. Okay. It would have been spelled, I think I would have spelled it G-E-R-E-L-L. -L. I think that's what we were talking about. Yeah. So when would, they had the height. We were going between the G or the J, and we were looking at J-E-R. Were we? Yeah, and mm -hmm. then we were looking at G, and then you came out with Terrell, so I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We should have had this written down. <laughs> Get a contract on my name. Right. <laughs> she had a contract. No, she had horns coming on top of her head. Oh, stop her it. cross-sided. She was in pain. Turn around, I said. It was okay, fine. Yes, I recall it's that so story. Bad. <laughs> yeah, see? You recalled that story. No, I remember you telling me before. That's like... <laughs> That's <laughs> only you saying that story. I'm not exaggerating. Oh, please. I was on the receiving end. <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all i'm courtney hinton of vervehousecollective.com verve house collective is all about creatives entrepreneurs and those who want to live an awesome life full of intention again that site is vervehousecollective.com and we'd love to see you Every January, we start out fasting. We start out fasting, and as we're fasting, we know that we have to make some changes in our lives. For some of us, this is tough. Every January, you be downing coffee, you be downing energy drinks, you're eating all kinds of popcorn with butter on them. <sighs> pizza, uh, you, you're doing all those things all year round, and, and, then you, and then you're complaining that you're overweight, but yet we don't stop. And then come, then come January, and we say, well, we're going on the fast. Well, we do it every January, you know it's coming, every January, and yet we complain. We complain that, you know, I don't know if I can, I can go 12 hours out of eating or I don't know if I, I'm just going to be eating berries and, and nuts for a few days. And, and we did the Daniel fast. And as we did the Daniel fast, we were making some changes in our lives. We had to change how we ate. We had to learn how to get up in the morning and seek God first. We had to get into his word as we were going along. And, 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 and if, you got, if you looked in the book of Daniel, and you looked in that first chapter of Daniel, uh, and when you looked in that first chapter, you begin to read down, it says that Daniel asked if they could just have vegetables and water for 10 days and then compare them to the other young people who was eating the king's meat and eating the king's or drinking the king's wine. Down around that 18th verse, God blessed them. God blessed them with strength. God blessed them with wisdom. Daniel even had visions and able to interpret visions and dreams. 
So they, Daniel and them with 10 days, the first fast, and God blessed them on the end with wisdom and strength. We went 12 days. God is going to bless us with wisdom and strength. So like I said a little earlier, um, I have, for the last few weeks, um, had taken part in doing the Daniel fast. Now, my church does a fast every week, and every, not every week, uh, every year, at the beginning of the year. Um, either that's just being without food for maybe 12 days or, or 12 hours for 12 days without food, or um, maybe just a juice fast, or in this case, in this year, we did a 12-day Daniel fast. Um, I had done the Daniel fast before, so in some weird way that kind of made me the go-to person if anyone had questions on like, hey, is this allowed? Can we eat this? Or, um, you know, just questions like that. Or, uh, and, I mean, there were kind of a lot of them from people just asking like uh, if uh, veggie burgers were okay or um, if uh, you can make this kind of weird-looking brownie thing, which someone sent me a picture of. And uh, the, the point is it's, it's a sacrifice. So, you know, you have to kind of go without certain things. And the Daniel fast is, is in, in the Bible, in the book of Daniel. That's, and Daniel did this fast. He did it twice. As um, my father explained, he, he, the first time he did it was 10 days. The second time he did it was 21 days. So the first time I did it, it was the 10-day fast. I did that a couple years ago. Uh, after I got laid off from one job and I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. I need some kind of guidance. And sometimes the only way you can get some kind of spiritual guidance is if you go on a fast and it's, and it's not just with, uh, just not eating, but it's also, you know, reading the Bible and praying more often than normally would. So whenever I did have cravings for some kind of meat or some kind of sugars or some kind of anything, then that's when you, you know, consult the Bible and the scriptures to help you get past, not necessarily get past, but get closer to the Lord in order for him to show you what it is that you need to do or just to hear him get clo get closer and he'll, you know, um, reveal himself to you in, in ways to, to help you on your path. So that's what I did. And I would say I finished, I remember it was a Sunday that I finished and I finished strong and, you know, I went out with my family. We all went to a hibachi grill and that was the first uh, meat that I had. And um, it wasn't until that Tuesday that I think it might've even been that Monday night that I was like, Hey, you know what? I haven't gone to or I haven't, you know, let me just check out this place and take a tour of the Kinetic School of Broadcasting. So I went there, um, got accepted just based on a tour. And even just being there, I just felt like, wow, this is kind of, you know, this feels like home. This is where I need to be. And I feel like that is what changed my life in a sense. Like from doing the fast and, and coming out of the fast and kind of being guided and directed to where it is I need to go, what it is I need to do. Because once I got there, then it was like so many doors started or so many ideas started coming to mind. Uh, not, I mean, just the direction of my career, what I should be doing next. And that's kind of where I, I ended up going. However, I mean, the story does change because after I finished, I didn't, um, I mean, it's, it's a much longer story, but there's things that I just didn't realize or I didn't do. I didn't take internships like I probably should have. And uh, I ended up going back to doing jobs that weren't as fulfilling. So, but the point is I was directed to where I needed to go and, um, through that re revelation and that just that moment of clarity, um, is what I attribute to, uh, God revealing to me after the fast was over. So I, and it was a struggle. It was a struggle because it was a real sacrifice. I was doing it on my own. Uh, my parents, they were, you know, having their regular meals, which was chock full of steaks and chickens and all the animals and all the sugars. And me, I just made like little bowls of like carrots and peas. And, and um, I mean, I really did the best I could to stick to just fruits, vegetables, and um, like nuts and and that's basically what the Daniel fast is. It's 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 mostly just vegetables and and fruits and water. Um, I mean, there are a couple of things you can do here and there. Like you can have orange juice, as long as it's like. I mean, it, it depends on how strict you really want to take it. And and for me, the 
the more strict it was, not necessarily the more strict it was, but I, I really wanted to do the best I could to follow the guidelines of, um, and, you know, really getting the most out of it. So, and I, and that's what I did again this time for the, the 21 day fast. And still a lot of people ask me, can I have this or is this allowed? Um, and it all comes down to reading the labels at the, on the back of the, whatever it is. Um, no processed foods. That's another big one. Um, it's, it it can be a struggle and a little frustrating at times, but at the same time, doing it this time with more people, uh, with my family, with, um, uh, my, my church family, uh, because they did it for 12 days. Um, my friend and frequent guest of the Indu podcast, Courtney, she did it, uh, decided to do it with us and she did it for 21 days or she brought the idea to me. So it's like, yeah, I'll do it for the 21 days. I'm like, you know what? Because I know of it being a struggle, I will do it with you. Um, and then my family jumped on board and did it with me or did it with us and we all did it for 21 days. Um, and it was, it was great. Um, I mean, again, it was still a struggle because that's when times, or that's when you're at work and people are like, hey, here, have this, like, a uh, chili dog thing. And it was like, you never offer me chili dogs. Why are you doing it now? But it's it's all, uh, like, a test and a trial. And it's not just the food. It is also, you know, you'll run into some spiritual battles, which I felt I had um, a couple of them. I didn't write any of them down. Um, but there, there are times, you know, I kind of I kind of go through that. I mean, I was up for... Uh, uh, um, like a, like a job kind of thing. And basically it never happened. It fell through. I had a lot banking on it. I had a lot writing on it, but it just didn't happen. So I felt like that was a, a kind of a test on, you know, cause sometimes when I'm let down, I, I want to retreat to my comfort foods and you know, the, my cookies and, and my, um, not necessarily the meats, but my sweets. I've, I've got a serious, strong sweet tooth, which I'm glad even now is not really reemerged to the level that it was before where I would have left work and gone immediately and bought a pack of, uh, hashtag cremeless Oreos. Um, and even now there, there are some Oreos I really want to try those cinnamon bun ones. And I still haven't tried them yet, but I still don't feel the, the urge or the need to go out and get, get them. However, it was recently Pancake Day, so I do need to celebrate that, which I probably will do a little later, and National Pizza Day, which I will also do that probably at the end of this week. Um, I was advised, and I'm advising anyone now that's listening, that if you're ever going to do a fast like this, that if you are going to reemerge back into, quote-unquote, the real world of, you know, food and so forth, that you do so slowly. Like, you, you ease back into it, which... I and my family did not quite do, uh, as we were warned, um, at least from my experience, I did not, uh, engage in any meat products until the next day. I think I had a little too much. I had some kielbasa for breakfast with, uh, scrambled eggs and, um, what were those things I had? Um, hash browns. Yes. Which, I mean, it was cafeteria food, so it wasn't really great. I'm not accounting that for whatever it was, but later on I had like these little fried chickens, which were delicious and super crunchy, but they're also kind of greasy. So I think, I think the grease really was the problem, the greasiness of it. And I already don't do fried foods like that. I mean, I might have an occasional donut here or a fried pork chop there, but, um, I mean, coming back from just eating, uh, fruits and vegetables and brown rice and, and a lot of grains, basically just all natural, very healthy foods. And then just, going to town with these little fried chickens and it was really only two chickens but still just the fact that I had all these things like in my system my body wasn't ready for it I had a pretty rough night Monday night going into Tuesday um um for for lack of uh not lack but just just to spare you the graphic details um I did not stay in my bed I mostly stayed in the bathroom so I'll just leave it at that since I was there all night I had had to take a day off Tuesday because yeah, I just, I just couldn't get myself together. So yeah, with all that said, I just like to say that if you're going to do a fast like this to ease back into the real world carefully and, um, just don't go too crazy with like, it's like, Oh, I can have sugars and sweets and coffees and and meats and chickens and, and everything. Don't go crazy like that. Um, now the fact that the fast lasted 21 days. We started, uh, I don't remember the exact day, but it ended on Super Bowl Sunday. So I specifically was like, you know what? 
even though it's Super Bowl Sunday, I don't care. I'm going to, you know, stick with it. Um, as tempting as it is to, like, break the fast at, like, a certain hour, which is the rest of what my rest of my family did, um, I'm like, you know what, it, it's, it's a sacrifice. I really want to, you know, stick to it and make, you know, a whole 21 days. Um, I did that even with my birthday. And they're even asking, like, my parents are asking, like, do you want to, like, take a break or something because it's it's your birthday and like you know what I'm, I'm good you know it's it's a sacrifice I'm going to just have to miss out and in my mind the bigger the sacrifice the bigger the blessing so I'm I'm still waiting and in looking out for any revelations any kind of things that the Lord might want to tell me or show me which is the whole point of doing a fast is just to to get closer to the Lord in a sense well not even in a sense that's what it is um and the last week in particular, I felt that that was that connection was finally like getting stronger. And, and, and it's not him. It, it's really it comes to us, to, you know, people just trying to make that connection. If you make the effort, then he, he's going to meet you. So I started doing that. I knew the other part of like doing a fast I was not doing. And that involves reading like your Bible or any biblical text or anything like that. And I wasn't doing it. But by the last week, that's what I really felt drawn to do, which is what I was supposed to be doing and getting into the better habit of doing that. So that is uh, definitely what I was doing the last week. I felt the connection growing stronger, which was a great thing. Um, I started reading. I was taking notes um, and just, you know, doing better to live a better and spiritual life or a more spiritual life than I was before. Um and it was great. It was it was a great experience, and I, I felt I felt um, I, I kind of want to say satisfied. And even now, even after now that the fast is over, it's been I think like three days now. Um, it I don't have the cravings for the sweets and the meats, and it's and it's because maybe because I, I did form a new habit, um, and and from making all of these these foods and all these things, it's it's like opened up like new doors and, and like, you know, I want to keep doing this. It's, it's made me healthier and I like the foods that I'm eating. I, I like preparing the foods that I'm eating. And, um, one thing I also want to say when you're doing like a fast like this, it does help if there are other people doing it with you, or especially if you're in the same household with other people doing it with you, because if you're not like, well, what I was doing the first time, it's, it's difficult because I mean, if also, if someone else is preparing food, they have to prepare like two separate meals. Like, okay, this one can't have any sugar in it or meat or anything like that. Um, but if everybody is all doing it, then it just makes it that much easier just to make that one meal. Um, but I'm just saying that's, that's just some helpful advice. If you know, you or your family or, uh, whatever they plan to do something like this. There's also tons of resources and recipes out there, um, which helped a great deal. Because again, if I was left to my own devices, it would just be, you know, those frozen vegetables and probably a bunch of frozen fruits to make smoothies out of, and that would be it. But fortunately, I know a lot of creative people from um, my mother to uh, my sister Mittery to Courtney, everyone exchanging all these recipes and ideas with each other. And uh, I just reaped the benefits of uh, just eating them. And, you know, I came up with some recipes myself, too. Mostly when it came to smoothies and snacks, I made a lot of uh, homemade potato chips, uh, sweet potato chips, which are my particular favorite. I finally made um, real apple chips, which I'm still trying to figure that out. I think the fact that I could not use sugar is really what kind of stifled some of my snacking. And um, I was just trying to do the best I could to get around that. But since sweet potatoes are naturally sweet, that really did help a lot. And I bought a, mad um, a, mandal a man mandolin, sorry, I'm thinking of the Mandarin, which is a Iron Man super villain. But the mandolin slicer um, nearly sliced off my middle finger and um, at least two fingers. So, yeah, that was great. Just wonderful. Um, but I, did not let that, I didn't let that stop me. I did continue to, um, you know, slice things, just not my fingers. And um, it was great. worked out well. I mean, when it came to making potato chips and uh, apple chips and all those fun things, uh, because I was doing it before with just a knife. And with all the sharp objects I have in the house, this is the first time I actually really cut myself. And it was, like, really, really bad. Like, I needed help putting bandages on and um, 
what else I need help doing? I don't know. It was basically I just couldn't use my right hand, and I am right-handed. So, yeah, it 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 happens. I wish I had a little recording of um of Eli saying his catchphrase. I got to get it now because he might be moving on to new catchphrases soon. But uh, yeah, it happens. Just you know, be careful. Uh, fortunately, I'm able to use my two fingers that were like uh, unusable for a while. But there there we have it. That also happened during the fast, too. And I'm not attributing that to the fast. I'm just saying when it came with food preparation, sometimes I was making finger foods, and my finger became involved in that food. So, no, no, I didn't. I cleaned out the little piece of finger, which had, like, my fingerprint and everything, so I probably should have burned it, so just no one tried to replicate it. Um, but there we have it. The Daniel Fast, the 21-day Daniel Fast. There are plenty of resources, again, out there if you are looking forward to doing it. Um, and I was uh, I was interested in others uh, people's experience with it. I didn't get as many people as I wanted to. In fact, I really only got my mother, uh, to, to talk to me about her experience with the fast and why she fasts and, um, just to explain, you know, a little further about, about fasting in general. So, um, here we go. So I know that you fast more often, at least I think you used to do like once a week or matter of fact, it was today, oh, okay. Wednesday. <laughs> which I was kind of um, praying about to see if I should be doing it today, but I ended up doing it. Because I was like talking to the Lord and saying, should I still do this after just the two week, three week fast just came off of? Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, I, I did talk to you know God about going back to normal. Um, but as far as the diet wise, I, can't, I find it very hard to do going back to eating all the foods you used to eat. Mm, yeah. So, so bye bye. But, um, but why is it that you that you fast? I fast to get closer to God, and um, I want to communicate better with Him. Mm. Um, I still have trouble sometimes distinguishing if He's telling me something to do, or is it me telling me to to do something? Um, I really want to. I guess I'm I'm looking for. The, a good, a, a, how do I say, the experience. Mm. I really want um, an encounter with him, I guess. To know, like, without a doubt that that's him speaking. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And I just want to really have an, uh, uh, really have a great, intimate um, relationship with him. You know, I feel um, I kind of strayed away a little bit because um, I used to get up, like, three o'clock, two o'clock in the morning and just come in the room and just it's just silent. Sometimes just light a candle and I'll just, you know, put a, a blanket on the floor and just kneel down or sometimes just lay before him and um just pray and really talk about things going on. This is when uh Mittery and and Crystal were still here because mm -hmm. I then I could talk to him about the problems going on with oh, okay. them mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's quite a bit with them fighting all the time but um he really helped me through that and just by my spending time with him I really really got a lot out of that relationship but I, I strayed away so you really haven't had an experience like that since then or no mm -hmm. not really but it's getting better I'm I'm really just from this three-week fast we do, the Daniel fast, I've been reading and really just getting a lot of information. I'm just like really mm -hmm. enjoying the reading um, and getting information, being able to um, just teach the kids that's on, at, at church for mm -hmm. Sunday school, the information I'm getting and stuff and just sharing a time with them. Okay. But I still just really am looking for, I just still want to be more closer to them. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted a better experience with him. To have some kind of, or some kind of maybe revelation or like yeah, um, enlightenment or yeah. just something like that. Yeah. And then you, you do the the fasting on the Wednesdays, the once a week, that's just a, a time just to set aside, just to do that? Or? I, went, I started, it started first when we were um, at uh, Shiloh, when, whenever we had Bible study then, I, which was on a Tuesday. Hmm. I did it on Tuesdays. Since we are here at Grace and Mercy, um, we've been having Bible studies on Wednesdays. 
So I switched it to Wednesdays. Mm. Um, so ever since I've been doing Wednesdays. Oh, okay. And then sometimes it ends up on, I'll end up doing also on Sunday mornings. Because mm -hmm. um, I won't eat anything until dinner, dinner time. So that's kind of a fast there too. So. You're so busy on Sundays anyway. It's kind of yeah. difficult to eat anything. Yeah. But, yeah. But mainly I do set aside Wednesdays. And then even for dinner, I try to not eat, eat any meat um, for dinner. Mm -hmm. And if I did, it would be, only be probably fish if I did. I was thinking, how would you how would you define like a fast or even differentiate a fast from a diet? Because that's uh, I've heard people call the Daniel fast Daniel diet when yeah. at times the there's a difference. Well, and to me there is. Right? Yeah. Well. The Daniel diet, like some people say, it is a diet for them because they can't have, um, they have to stay away from meat and stuff. Mm -hmm. But for us, like the Watson family, <laughs> we love meat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was a sacrifice of not having meat. It was a big sacrifice for me and for, for, for dad. And also giving up the sugar. Mm-hmm. And what else, what else was there? There was the oh, sugar. Like bread and white and rice. And bread, yeah. White rice and, and all the, you know, mainly the sugar because you find out we did more reading of back of cans and mm. bottles and stuff. It's like, oh my goodness. But the meat part was really, really hard. Mm, yeah. You know, that was the hardest part. Me but for sugar. me, that's what a fast is when you're sacrificing something. Mm. And even, you know, even just... When we were able to have the, the foods that were allowed, it still was like, no, I don't want to just eat just because I can. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm really hungry, then I'll go and get some vegetables or some fruit. But that was more of a fast when you're sacrificing your, and, you know, really putting God's word first, putting him first, doing things. And for a diet, it's just eating at a certain, um, eating the certain foods, like you it just doing it moderately or you got to have you got to weigh it or something it's different mm -hmm. but that's my difference is it's a fast is a sacrifice because even on Wednesdays for me I don't have anything just um I'll just have lemon water all day mm -hmm. yeah and then sometimes it'll just be a liquid liquid uh fast I'll just have you know maybe a soup for lunch or something like that broth but mainly what I've been doing is just either just having uh, lemon water or just plain water, or I won't have anything until it's dinner time. And even while I'm making dinner, mm -hmm. I don't eat or taste it, you know, while I'm making it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, that's a challenge there. Mm -hmm. But since I've been doing it, you know, and I do it as often as I do, it's, it's, I can do that. It's, I find it easy to just prepare the food without tasting it or anything. It's, it's really comes natural for me now. Hello, Indubians. I'm Laura, host of Louder Vision, the podcast for visionaries, artists, and creatives. On my podcast, I'm interviewing fellow artists trying to figure out how we can bring our creative vision to life without compromising our values, crushing our soul, and dying poor. Yep, that explains it. You can listen to the Louder Vision podcast on lauramioli.com and connect with me on Twitter at Loudervision. So I want to thank you all very much for listening once again to all of my babbles, but most importantly for listening to my parents, Donald and Shirley Watson. Um, and thank, I want to thank them personally for giving birth to me and uh, allowing them to, uh, I don't know, let me be as creative and creative nonsense that I come up with. Um, but yeah, they are awesome and wonderful people and I love them dearly. I really do. Um, they are awesome parents and just great people. And, uh, they are very hard workers. Uh, a lot of people that come across them and know them, they may not see that or know that outright, but they are very busy. I mean, they are busy doing stuff right now. I don't even know where they went, but I mean, whatever they, they're busy. Uh, but I appreciate them and I love them very much. But that's all I have for this particular episode. Um, I think at the end of this one, I will do my. I will finally 
read off uh, my birthday greetings to all those people who may have been waiting. Maybe they forgot. Maybe they thought I was ignoring them. I don't know. But my intentional, my my original plan was to make a video of um, me thanking everyone. I did it a couple years ago. I wanted to do it last year. Never did. Time just got away from me. Same time. Same thing that happened this year. In fact, the problem I had this year is my camera is only limited to the uh, life that the battery allows. Normally I like to have my camera plugged in, but the plug finally broke. So now I'm just stuck with just charging the battery and keeping that charged. Or maybe I just have to get another battery and eventually another camera. All that said, hey, you want to donate to my camera fund, then look me up on PayPal at tsterling3sfx at gmail.com and send me some money. And uh, that will go to my camera fund and uh, any other uh, gadgets and things I might need to purchase. Specifically things I like to do to enhance the podcast, because I would like to do more video stuff, but nah, I kind of want to upgrade my, my video stuff first. But, in the, I mean, I'm still going to work with what I have, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm trying to wrap up here, so let me just stop babbling and uh, just, you know, kind of say goodbye. And, uh, goodbye. Haha, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, what I normally say is, uh, if the world didn't suck, then we'd all fall off. Now, goodbye. The Indoo Podcast was recorded on planet Earth and is an extension of the Indoo blog found at Indoo.com. You can subscribe and find more episodes on iTunes and Indoob.podbean.com. You can also follow Master Sterling on Twitter at Indoob. I am not allowed. This is Belford signing off, and this has been another 3SFX production. Use your words, Chief. <laughs> Good boy. So to keep this from being too disgustingly long, uh, I figured the best way to give out these uh, quick birthday shoutouts is just to read the name and keep it moving. Um, before I had read the entire message and I realized that, wow, this is taking way too long and I started losing. So I've since got a little bit of water and um, I'll do the best I can to keep any kind of notes um, <laughs> to a minimum. Because uh, some some of them I do want to give out little tiny little messages, but um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so, so I'm trying to go through this quickly, but um, I'm just gonna give out the name and say thank you at the very end. So this is just basically a shout out. So uh, Curtis uh, Curtis Gregg, Linda Smith, JD JD Gear rather, uh, Susan Cote. I'm never really was sure how to pronounce your last name, but. Uh, Mary Pearson, which is my grandmother, uh, Pam Turden, or Poom as I like to call her, Ben Max, Donald Watson, which is my father, which he actually sent me a text message as well, and called me and said hi, because we live together. So, uh, Pastor Willis J. McCaw, uh, Danielle Carlton, and Felicia, I'm assuming she's attached to that. Uh, we got to get together soon, by the way. Uh, Brie Lang, uh, Philip, uh, Kristen, Chris Diaz, which I need to get in touch with you and Barry McManus, because I miss you guys both, and I haven't talked to you guys in forever, so uh, that's to both of you. Uh, Damon Gibbs, which also gave me a text message, and his birthday was two days after mine, plus I saw him that night, so thank you. Um, oh, I was waiting for the thank yous for later. Uh, Marisha, uh, Donald Gregg, Kevin Wilson, Mike DuPaul, which uh, um, also from the Lost Isle, because we were doing that for many, many years. Paul Livingston, Glenda Lease. Art Bruder, uh, Johanna, never was quite sure how to say your last name, but you know who you are. Cece Williams, and Andrea, Lauren Maloney, which I also need to get in contact with, so if you're hearing this, then what's up? Uh, my cousin Kimberly, I haven't talked to you in forever, also. Uh, Jeremy, uh, James Woods, Kyle Jones, Daisy Rodriguez, uh, my aunt Nikki, or Nicole Pearson, uh, Kyra Lord, Laura Mioli, shout out to Laura and the Loud Vision podcast, Barbara Toast, Tose? I never knew how to say your last name either, um, Maureen Curry-DePace, which, quick story with her, she was a, a teacher of mine, 
and um, I came back later uh, after being an adult, and she told me I can call her by her first name, but it's still weird for me because she was always a teacher, so I'm like, uh, it's still weird, but Maureen, hi, how you doing? Uh, Walter McIntyre, Lucretia Williams, Michelle Taylor, who actually called me the day before, the day of, um, and a couple days later, and several times, because, you know, she's a best friend like that, so yeah. Carla Woods, uh, Tasha, Monique, Miracle, my niece, uh, my aunt Cindy, uh, uh, Lucinda Scott Willoughby, Pete Koiva, who was just just a fun name to say, Pete Koiva, uh, Curtis Gregg again, I don't know if he knew that he wished me two birthdays, but hey, thank you again, and his birthday I think was the day before mine, so happy belated birthday, it's really belated now, because like I said, it's, this is, by the way, this is my first time reading these, it is February 10th, I know my birthday was January 29th, but it's February 10th. Uh, Jim Hamilton, and of course my sister, Mittery. Um, now some of these, oh actually no, there's a couple more, uh, Lisa Negron, uh, Corey Glasby, and Michelle Frank, and uh, Pretty Locks Lorraine, I don't know who you are, but thank you. Thank you to all these people who wish me a happy birthday. Now a lot of these people, they had like little messages for me, and I, I read them the first time, but then this whole extra bit ended up being like 10 minutes long, and it's like even longer than I would have wanted to deal with and put up with, but um... I will respond to those, so hopefully if you're hearing this, either way, if, if I respond even on Facebook, you're going to get the, that notification, but this is my first time being on Facebook since I think a couple days before my birthday, so that's like almost, not a whole month, but a few weeks, so that is why you have not heard anything, it's just I haven't been on, and now I, here I am, and I am now responding to all of you, hopefully, I wanted to do a video, but things just haven't been working out, so I don't remember if I did mention it earlier, but if you'd like to donate to the video fund, please look me up on, on PayPal uh, and send as much as you'd like to, tsterling3sfx at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, that will go into my, my production funds, so not just the camera, but it will go to any microphone equipment, studio stuff, laptops, all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, feel free. I mean, also, if you didn't get me a gift but wanted to, or just wanted to donate to the Indube Fund, then uh, sure, and I think in the future I'm I'm intending to get like, and do patches. So it's some kind of swag. So if you want some kind of swag like that, then uh, let me know, and uh, we'll try to work something out. And I'll make sure that you you get some of that swag for being a a patron of. And, and an, an official Indubian at that, because you will have the official Indub swag. Um, yeah, that'll be something we'll, we'll do later on this year. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. See, this is what you get for listening to past the credits. All right. Anyway, thank you, thank you so much for all those who wish me a happy birthday. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all in like two weeks.